Hi, this is Pete Warden, and this is the screencast for the TensorFlow for Mobile Poets tutorial. What I'm going to be doing here is covering a lot of the background of what's going on uh, during the tutorial, but I recommend you actually look at the tutorial uh, webpage to get the details on the commands, and you'll see that in the description of the video. And so I am going to talk you through how to take a model that you have trained yourself using the TensorFlow for Poets tutorial, which you should do now uh, if you haven't already, um, and show you how you can actually take that model and put it inside an iOS application, all of your own. So let's get started. So the first thing to check is to make sure you actually have the uh, results of the TensorFlow for Poets tutorial in the TF files folder where they should have been output. Um, so you should check to make sure you have them there. And then uh, start up a new Docker quick start terminal. Uh, I'm just going to make the window a bit bigger here so you can uh, see the font a bit more easily. Um, and I'm also going to fast forward through some of the um, long waiting sections here and during the compilation. And you should see the whale and then run the latest TensorFlow build. And then you're in the TensorFlow build, so just make sure that you can actually see those um, retrained graph uh, files that you created before. So the reason we're actually using um, Docker here rather than running this natively on uh, OS X is that Python uh, can be set up in a lot of different ways on OS X and one of the biggest problems I found when I was helping people get up and running um, sort of one-to-one -one with this kind of tutorial was that all of the different ways that it could be installed meant that trying to get um, the TensorFlow Python scripts running um, in that environment could uh, take quite a long time. So just to simplify things for this uh, tutorial, I'm using uh, Docker to run all of the um, tool uh, scripts. And you'll see uh, later on I actually use white for any Docker terminal windows and green backgrounds for any of the um, uh, native OS X terminal windows that we use later on. Anyway, so let's um, continue. We've made sure that the files are there. We go into the TensorFlow folder and we're going to build the label image tool. And again, I'm fast forwarding through the building. It's going to take quite a while longer. What this tool does is it runs your model and it gives you some labels. So in this case, I've done it on flowers. I'm looking at a daisy, so I expect to see a daisy coming up. And just one side note here, you'll see the warning about the batch norm op being deprecated. Um, this is actually something that we're going to um, uh, fix in a later step. Um, so just a side note, you will not see this warning after you've run uh, one of the later scripts that we run. But anyway, you run this, we expect to see Daisy as the um, top label, and in indeed we do. So that means that the model is working fine. And if you've trained for your own categories, this is just a sanity check to make sure that you're getting um, the same expected labels as you go through this process, because we'll be changing the uh, actual model file. So we just want to have some reassurance that it's still working. Now the first script we're going to run is called Optimize for Inference. And this does um, a whole bunch of different operations on the graph. Uh, one of the most crucial for us is it actually gets rid of um, any operations that aren't needed uh, between the um, input and output nodes that we're actually going to be using for this inference step. And this is important in our retrained graph because it has some operations like decode JPEG in there 
that we aren't actually using uh, because we bypass them when we feed in the input image but because the mobile build by default only uses a subset of ops, only has a subset of ops compiled in to keep the binary size down, um, that decode JPEG op is not present and it will actually cause an error by default when you try and load it. So uh, we're going to build this tool and we're going to run it on the graph to get rid of unused ops and also do some other things like folding batch normalization into the weights which helps speed things up a bit. Um, so we've now built the tool, we're going to go ahead and run it and something to notice here is we give it the input and output names that we're actually going to be using uh, when we're running inference on our graph and this is important because it tells it exactly which paths of the uh, TensorFlow computation graph are going to be run so it can get rid of all of the rest. And now we've run it, we just want to make sure that it's still giving the same uh, labels that we were expecting to get. So we're hoping to see uh, Daisy here and indeed we still see Daisy as the top label. So that means that the graph is still producing sensible results. So another problem for uh, deploying on mobile is that model files can be pretty big and by default the model file that we've trained is about 87 megabytes which is awfully large for any uh, mobile app to include. Um, luckily these models are pretty resistant to precision loss and there's all sorts of different ways of um, shrinking these down to 8 bits but one of the simplest is to actually leave the values, the weights that are making up the bulk of the file as floats but round them down to 256 levels uh, within each uh, weight tensor and that doesn't actually shrink the on-disk uh, size uh, because uh, the, um, they're still being stored as floats but the interesting thing is that um, it actually means that when these are packaged, uh, which happens in .ipa files um, for uh, Xcode and iOS, uh, these uh, files take up a lot less space. So if you look here, the default size is 87 megs. Uh, and that is still the same for the rounded graph, but if you actually zip it, uh, it goes down to about 24 megabytes, whereas zipping the unquantized graph uh, leaves it still at around 85 megabytes. So because the float values have been rounded to a set number of levels, there's a lot more repetition in the files for the uh, compression algorithm to work with. And just to make sure that things are still working, we uh, run label image again and look to see if we're actually getting daisy coming out and we are so we're still in good shape so the final processing step that we're going to take in docker is converting the graph to a memory mapped format and what this means is that the weights themselves which make up the bulk of the um, model files are loaded as memory mapped read-only files and the big advantage of this is that they don't add to the memory pressure on iOS which can be critical um, because you will actually find your app is killed uh, if it starts taking up too much memory so by using memory mapping uh, it not only speeds up the loading time but it also means that your app is not going to get uh, killed. The um, tricky part is that you actually need to use a different on-disk format and you need to make some changes which we'll show you later on to your uh, code to load this. Uh, so this utility actually makes changes to the uh, file format on disk 
um, so that it, all of the weights can actually be loaded um, through memory mapping. And it uh, gives a little output saying how many nodes it's converted. And now we're ready to switch to the native OSX terminal to take the results of that model transformation process and load them into um, a slightly modified version of one of the sample acts. So the first thing we're going to do is you should already have a copy of um, TensorFlow checked out. Uh, if you go into the folder uh, in a new native uh, OSX terminal window, um, which for the purposes of this screencast I'm uh, making green so you can tell that we're not in Docker, um, and uh, go into the folder and then uh, start the building process by running um, build all iOS uh, .sh. And again, I've sped this up a lot. Um, the reason we're doing this on uh, OS X rather than in Docker is that you can only build this stuff using Xcode um, on OS X. So uh, you'll see here it's building um, all of the library. Uh, and you should see that there have been no errors and it's created a libtensorflow-core.a library that we're going to be using. Um, so after this, we just want to copy the uh, graph files that we've created, the final memory mapped outputs of the transformation process we did in Docker uh, into the uh, iOS example that we're going to use into its data folder. So we just copy those two over there and then we're actually going to open the example in Xcode and we have to make a few changes to the uh, assets here so in the navigator in the project navigator in the left hand pane you can see that there's a folder icon highlighted um, up the top there uh, if you're not seeing this uh, go into camera example data get rid of the references uh, to the old models uh, which you would normally download doing a standard image net um, so right click here uh, and choose uh, delete and then open up the data folder that uh, we just copied stuff to in the finder and we go back to Xcode and make sure we have the finder window up then we can drag those over and into the data folder and one thing to make sure is make sure that the add to targets uh, checkbox is uh, highlighted there now we're going to build this hopefully it should just build and run and if you have your, make sure you've got your iOS device plugged in and also up for development um, and if everything is working fine you should uh, start to see something like this showing up on your um, on your iPhone and here I'm using the flowers example so an easy way to um, test this if you don't have lots of examples of everything you're going to be looking at lying around is to do a Google image search and then point the uh, device at the, um, the results and just check that it seems to be doing the same thing. So you can see here it indeed thinks that these are tulips and if we pick another example and zoom in you'll see it really definitely thinks these are tulips. So um, it all seems to be working. Hopefully, if you've been able to follow these steps, you should also uh, be seeing uh, good results. And um, I hope this inspires you to start building some cool new mobile apps of your own. Thanks for listening.